President Jame took the mantle of leadership in the Gambia in a bloodless coup that gave birth to the Sepon Republic on the 22nd July 1994. Since then, agriculture remains a top priority in the Gambia with calls for the citizenry to eat what they grow and grow what they eat which became a household slogan in the smiling coast of Africa, the Gambia. Twenty years on, a time frame was set for the attainment of food self-sufficiency for Gambians and by Gambians, the Vision 2060 Food Initiative. It was Sheikh Professor Haji Dr. Yehe Jame's vision and the provision of a conducive environment which motivated the likes of Idi Job to venture in agriculture, specifically poultry production. Before I talk about M Holding, I'm, I'm better known in, in the energy and petroleum business. Um, I've been a regional director for, for Shell, um, involved with uh, managing 17 countries in Western and Central Africa. And uh, in the Gambia, I've been involved uh, in the setting up of Elton, which I'm the founder members that set up Elton in Senegal. And we came and set up Elton in the Gambia. But most importantly, I was involved in the formulation and design of the Mandinari Petroleum Fuel Depot. And as you know, the petroleum is the lifeblood of the modern economy. Without petroleum, you wouldn't have uh, health services, you wouldn't have uh, emergency services, you wouldn't have security services. So that is my background. With M Holding, uh, we form a social enterprise because in Africa we have discovered that uh, it's not about wealth generation. There are lots of people that are generating a lot of wealth. But the biggest problem is, is wealth distribution. And uh, in the absence of mechanism to ensure that the wealth that is generated is also distributed to touch as many people as possible, it has brought about a, a huge gap between the, the half and the half nots. So M Holding, a social enterprise, was formed, of course, to be profitable because profit is the engine of the private sector. Profit drives innovation, profit drives growth, Pro profit brings about employment. But also we think it has to have a lot of social impact. So we are looking for businesses that are profitable, but businesses also that have a huge impact on the population. With the core belief that food self-sufficiency and national pride are the cornerstone for development, Empire's Holding considers the Back to the Land agenda as an initiative with the potential to not only provide food for the masses, but also create employment in numbers for women and the youth folk, as envisaged by President Chame, who always encourages Gambians to work for national development. This poultry project was a direct response to the call by His Excellency for the Gambians to go back to the land, and uh, a call that is very close to my heart. Situated in Farato, Empire's Holding specializes in poultry production, employing over a hundred women and youth to run the day-to-day -day activities of its processing factory. Empire's is a poultry processing company that has been set up in 2012. And basically we are dealing with women and youth farmers and other outgrowers who are interested in poultry production. We have this 11-acre farm situated in Farato and it's an integrated poultry farm. And we have about uh, five units uh, here. The units are the horticulture, which mainly is not our core, 
But then we have a, a hatchery, we have a processing plant, we have a railing a farm, and we have a proposed parent farm as well. The choice of poultry production as a catalyst for development and an appropriate cluster for the Gambia was derived from the observation that poultry rearing and consumption are widespread as a traditional village activity in all regions of the country and in almost all rural households. We believe that poultry is the lowest investment a household can do. And poultry doesn't distract the, the majority of the poor from their traditional activity. The majority of the poor people in the Gambia are women and farmers. And by doing poultry, they can do poultry in addition to, to, their, uh, to their gardens. They can do poultry in addition to their, to their groundnut farm. Poultry, um, uh, poultry doesn't distract them away from that. So it becomes a complementary activity for the, for the Gambian farmer. Poultry has a huge demand in our community in terms of eggs, in terms of the, in terms of the, the poultry meat. So we decided that poultry has a huge demand. Poultry is acceptable to all the religions of the Gambia, especially the majority, majority, majority Muslims. And poultry farming is something that we know how to do. If you go to every Gambian family, I mean like 20 years ago, there used to be a poultry coop, what they call in Wolof Ngundu Gana. There always used to be a small poultry coop where yeah, from time to time they will, they will generate their own eggs. From time to time they will generate also the, the live birds for, for slaughter. And uh, we all know and are familiar that people would go to the markets to buy, to, buy, to buy their own chicken, take it to the house and slaughter. So we thought that the demand is high and we know how to do poultry. Poultry farming also makes a substantial contribution to household food security as it helps diversify income generation and provides quality food, energy and fertilizers. And this provides employment for thousands of farmers across the land and breadth of the country. I tell people that the most important part of poultry is not the raising of the chicken, it's the feed. Poultry basically is the conversion of corn to meat. Uh, to produce a kilogram of, of poultry meat, you require two kilograms of feed. So our project was designed initially to be able to provide 100,000 chicken per month. To produce 100,000 chicken, you would require at least 300,000 kilograms of corn every month. To produce 300,000 kilograms of corn, you will require about a thousand hectares. And the average Gambian farm is one hectare. So you will need thousand farmers or farmer families working on a one hectare of land that will produce the corn we require. So under rain-fed agriculture, we can technically buy the produce of almost 10 to 12,000 farmers doing corn. We can buy it and convert that corn into poultry. The other pillar of what we do is that our hatchery, the hatchery that produces from eggs, the day old chick, what we call church, that hatchery requires Gambian to go into poultry farming. It doesn't matter whether it's 10 chicken or 20, whether you are doing layers, that is if you're raising the, the chicken for, for eggs or you're raising them for the meat market, those farmers are our customers. And we want these farmers to be involved. The, most of the outgrowers will raise their day-old chicks from uh, day one, take them 42 days until maturity. So after they mature, they have an option of either selling it themselves or they can, we can buy it back so that we can process it ourselves. We have a processing plant here where we can, do the, we can process the, chicks, the, the, uh, the, the live birds. We 
we have built uh, one of the most um, advanced poultry processing factories in Africa today, better than any that they have in the, in the neighboring countries. And of course, with the help of the Dutch government, and this factory would meet the highest food standards in the world. And uh, this factory requires to work properly 10,000 chicken per day, minimum. And this 10,000 chicken, we are hoping that the farmers will go to work and provide us with this 10,000 chicken that we will be able to process and package into dressed chicken that we call moji. The processing system uh, coming to us here at the processing center is we receive in the boiler chicken from the farm and we call it farm B now. Uh, from the farm manager, we request for it. And um, when they come in, uh, they are being transported via a uh, farm tractor or a farm vehicle. And once they come in, as soon as they enter the new processing center, they are being disinfected for any kind of biohazard that, might, that we can encounter. Once they are disinfect, we have staff that are readily available to start hanging the birds uh, on the shackles. Uh, this is a new facility that is capable of handling 1,000 birds per hour. Uh, it was built by stock uh, for us here and is one of a kind in the Gambia. And I think we are very proud to say that we have such a facility that can accommodate uh, the need of the Gambian people when it comes to poultry and farming. That is, we can deliver as much chicken to the Gambian community and beyond. Considering the vast interests of Empire's holding, poultry is just one aspect of their areas. Horticulture also plays a crucial role as the company leaves no stone unturned in its quest to provide quality agricultural services and at the same time help government achieve its aspirations in the agricultural sector. For the horticulture, we are engaged in uh, banana plantation, we are doing planting, we are doing okra, we are doing corn and uh, we have some other vegetables that we are engaging like tom fresh tomatoes and uh, the, the cucumber. We also do some vegetable gardening, but what I am saying is that we are focused on, on chicken, but then because chicken brings along corn, chicken is all about corn, chicken brings along dry face. So by doing chicken, we are also the customer of the Gambian corn farmer. Uh, so we're going to use the, the chicken to be able to increase corn production in this country. We become their market and then, but the product we sell to the public uh, is chicken. And the major competitor we have is the importers of chicken that are focused on re-export. The word moji is a fuller word meaning good. And the Empire's chicken, according to the farm's general manager, cannot be compared to any other brand, considering its freshness and taste. We call it moji because it is good for our economy, um, it is good for our farmers, and more importantly, and the president has been stressing this point, it is good for our health. Well, these are fresh chicken that are slaughtered in the day and given to you to, to eat. They don't do like uh, one year and in stores in Brazil and the USA and another three months in the seas and another couple of months in stores locally. The benefits of homegrown food are numerous, something which is crucial in the lives of Gambians as healthy food is necessary for a healthy population. And this has over the years been a source of concern to government. However, this poultry factory is here to take all the worries away, for these are made in the Gambia and by Gambians. Our product was born and bred in the Gambia. It's only the eggs that come from overseas. We put it in our machines, which is making them fresh.
Our chicken cannot be compared to others because ours is fresh, it is tastier, quality-wise also it, is, uh, it has not been frozen. Like the imported of chicken, they have been frozen, you don't know how long before they come into the Gambia. But this one is fresh, it is tastier and it was born and bred in the Gambia. Since it is uh, processed here in the Gambia, it doesn't stay here for two, three or five weeks or six years as it is when you have imports. We normally deliver it to our distributors. In, in fact, we have outlets that it goes the next day. This comes as a relief to many, considering the fact that many from a pot imported chicken which poses great threat to the health of the citizenry. We are not trying to monopolize the production of, of, of corn. We are not trying to monopolize the production of feed. We are just a driver. We are not the only people that are going to meet the, the requirement of poultry in the Gambia. There is the local chicken. The only thing what we are asking from the government and we are asking from the business community is to stop importation. The president also has said in his interview that necessity is the model of invention. If we close our doors today, everybody will go back to raising their own chicken pit. People will not starve. You know, like in India, at some point, they close their doors and say that, yes, we are not going to import this and this type of food. And that's where I believe that both the food self-sufficiency in, in chicken and the self-sufficiency in rice is possible. The AU is talking about food security like now in 2014. Um, but the Gambian president has been talking about food security for a long time. It has always been the agenda of this revolution. And recently in, in Nigeria, he said something that is very important, that food security is indispensable to national security. So we have seen that more and more people are willing to give us food free of charge, but they don't want us to grow our own food. The president has said that if we were to intensify the, 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 the rate, the output of the rice fields that we have even today, instead of producing one ton, if we raise the production level to five tons per hectare, already we can be, be self-sufficient in food. And when people are doubting this thing, I think they are not listening properly. It is said that when a, when a great man points to the moon, the embassy looks at his fingers. They don't look at what he's pointing. Because by just intensifying the number of hectares that we are growing today, the Gambia can be full self-sufficient in rice. And if we were to ban the importation of rice, the business people that are importing rice today will go and start producing rice. So food security is not having abundance of rice, because we already have abundance of rice. No, it's not about that. It's about our people going to work. Because when our people go to work to produce this rice, when our people go to work to produce this chicken, they are also earning money. They have, have had the purchasing power now to buy the rice. Because the imported chicken, we have enough chicken in the Gambia. So if we are talking about food security in chicken, it's not to have enough chicken. The quantities are here, they are being imported. It is that we want the Gambia to have better purchasing power. Because this chicken is done by the, by the American farmer. The corn is produced by the American farmer, by the Brazilian farmer. So if it, if it is as cheap as one dollar seed, if we don't have work, we cannot afford it. So the agenda of food security is not about only having abundance in food. It's that we will produce the food. Our people will have money. Our youths will stop going to the sea because they will have work to be able to afford it.
foremost, we think that directly we are going to employ a lot of Gambians. Even before the project starts now, we've employed about 150 Gambians full time. Mainly, uh, mainly, mainly the women. We have no bias against the men. But when it comes to processing and dressing and all that, the women uh, have proven to be, to be very serious, very, very, very diligent. So we are going to employ directly the people that are going to work in the industry, that is in the hatchery and in the processing unit. We also do offer some training, especially to youths and uh, to interested outgrowers who are not experienced enough to carry out poultry on their own. So once you come and want to do business with us, after we see your area of interest, we can guide you accordingly, depending on your interest. Some are first-time poultry outgrowers. We do offer them maybe two, two days or three weeks, or within the whole period, the six weeks, they can have like internship. We have students who come from the university, from the college, who come here for internship and we train them on poultry production. We also do conduct training programs on HIV, health and hygiene, and how to handle the birds and how to operate within the farm. We are also actually trying to work with other donor agencies, the World Bank, to try to help us develop centers of excellence in all the regions of the Gambia. Where we will train the farmers, instead of the usual old way of doing poultry, we'll train them in the new ways of, uh, of, doing, of doing poultry and provide them with the working capital, that is the day-old chick. And after five weeks, we will go and buy back the day-old chicks from them. So we need the farmers for the corn, we need the farmers to be our customers to buy our day-old chick. Once we sell them the day-old chicks, they can uh, take them to their farm and raise them, which creates a lot of job opportunity for themselves. Not only empires raising the chicks, but the farmers also having an opportunity to create employment by, raise, by raising their day-old chicks all the way to maturity. And once these chicks are mature, we can buy them back at a, at a profitable rate for the farmers. We can look at the market rate and then MPAS can come and, and offer them a wholesale rate which will be better for them too. Instead of selling their birds individually to, to people or going around to look for a market themselves, they don't have to worry about that. They can just worry about raising their chicks and once they are ready, MPAS can come pick up those chicks and, and buy them at a, at, at a profitable rate and then bring it to our processing plant here. The opportunities created by Empire's holding have not gone unnoticed and this has won the company plaudit from the president himself, who commended Mr. Idi Job for his initiative that stands to complement government efforts towards the realization of the aspirations of this country. I think sooner or later, maybe two, three years from now, Idi Job may be able to supply our uh, domestic requirements of chicken in addition to what is produced by other poultry farmers. So it's not a mean achievement, it's a great achievement. Um, I, am, I just want to thank the president. We are not ready um, for recognizing what we are, what we are doing. Uh, we were waiting uh, for him because it is definitely his, his project and he's given us over the period of formulation. I mean, he's received me, he's given me lots of advice because he, he, he is a farmer. I am not a farmer, I'm, 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 a, I'm an engineer, that's why I'm focusing on agro-industry. Because like he has said, when we talk about agriculture, it's not only about the farming, what about the processing? What about the marketing? So I am using my my expertise in, in industry as an engineer. I'm using my expertise in, in marketing, but I'm relying on the government to provide the extension services because they are the product expert. They know more about poultry, poultry disease.
So the 2016 target, yes, is only um, what I call uh, an administrative target. But it doesn't mean that the gains are not going to start. And I think, like, that's what the president is saying. Of course, 2016, the law will come into place. But we know that before 2016, and he has said it himself, we are going to be self-sufficient in a lot of things, but it means that we all have to work together. It means that the, the, the leader has pointed to where we want to go. The road is very clear. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, but we know where we are going. So everybody, the, especially the, the civil servants, especially the, the line ministries, we have to make it happen. We have to cut through the bureaucracy and deliver the, the results. And I believe we can. Um, and also to the benefit of the, the Gambian youths and our women, our, our populace. This is to, to our benefit. And inshallah, I think uh, we, 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 we can do it if every, all, the, all the hands are, are on deck. The Emoji brand is here to provide quality chicken to Gambians and eventually hopes to completely discourage the importation of frozen chicken legs in the country. And as Gambia celebrates 20 years of unprecedented development, and as government continues to encourage Gambian products, emphasis in the Gambia, made in the Gambia and proudly Gambian, come join the Emoji family and attain food self-sufficiency by 2016.